Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Let's Play Civilization 6 as Rome. Still having a little bit of a loyalty problem in Maqua due to the grievances, but I think that should get better. Plus, once I finish the Ancestral Hall, I'll have another governor title to be able to plop in a new governor there. So what you want to do when you uh, when you actually capture a city is just start repairing stuff. And the reason you want to do that is recently captured cities will have a massive production penalty. And so repairing things that already exist is the most efficient way you can get value from these cities. The Ancestral Hall is finished and I actually don't need the loyalty in here anymore. I am still going to go for the pyramids. The great thing is we've inherited a lot of fantastic infrastructure like stuff like holy sites. Now we are getting pillaged and stuff like that over here. It's not the end of the world. We'll deal with this barb camp once they start settling again. And all this infrastructure is going to be extremely helpful because we acquired it efficiently by getting it through war. Normally settling these cities would have cost us a ton of production in terms of settlers but we just created an army efficiently took them out and now we're in a strong position even though we're not super on par with the ai in terms of culture and science we'll still be able to catch up because we have such a huge empire already i already have enough era score to get my golden age so i'm gonna hold off on building my bath because they're worth four era score once you build your very first one of them my main objective now is to start mass settling from my capital and to do that i'm gonna want to improve tiles that give me production and since I've won the war, I no longer need to research machinery, so we're going to head over for writing. Perfect. The world enters into the medieval era, and now we get a golden age. More importantly, is it's a heroic age. Heroic ages happen if you get a golden age right after getting a dark age. What that means is we can pick three dedications. I think the three we're going to take here are pen, brush, and voice for that plus one culture for each specialty district. That'll be a lot of culture because we already have quite a few specialty districts. We're also going to pick up monumentality. This will allow me to use my faith to purchase builders and settlers, which I want to be doing right now. And we'll take Exodus of the Evangelists because we want to found a religion and then spread it. And also the plus four great profit points per turn will give us an extra little bit of faith to use for monumentality. Since we are in a golden age, it's now safe to found my religion because I should have enough loyalty pressure to deal with the negative of penalty of cities not following my religion. Found a religion, pick up a little bit of error score, and create the religion of Rome is quite good. In terms of religious beliefs, I think it's between Jesuit education and work ethic, and I feel like work ethic isn't super amazing for me this game, because I don't think many of my holy sites have high adjacency as it currently stands. Jesuit education will give me something to do with my faith, so I'm going to go ahead and pick that up so I can purchase libraries to catch up quicker. I'm also going to pick up tithe so that I can get an extra chunk of gold from converting each of my cities. Two era score from founding a religion, and uh, we'll build a bath this era too, so we should be on our way to at least a normal age. Unfortunately, the World Congress passed one turn before I was about to capture the last city of the Cree, which means I'm going to take a massive amount of grievances for it. Because if you don't know, when you capture the final city of an enemy civilization, you get a massive grievances penalty with all other civs in the game. You also get a massive boost to your era score, which is quite nice. So if I look now, after I capture that city, I have grievances with Nubia. So I'm going to try and declare a friendship with them right now, so they can't denounce me. So I have at least one player who's on my side. Our next goal is to pick up Mathematics and Apprenticeship. Mathematics so we can get the Diplomatic Quarter, and Apprenticeship so we can get plus one production from Mines and Industrial Zones, because Industrial Zones work really well with Aqueducts, and since Rome has a unique aqueduct, this will pair really well for us. Since we're in a new era, we can also promote the Void Singers. That's going to massively boost up my science, culture, and gold. So keep your eye over here. Once I click this, you should see the refresh, and we got a nice boost to all of these yields. Looks like a military emergency is going to be passed against me. Hopefully it doesn't. Well, that's pretty bad luck. Looks like I'm at war with three people already. I did manage to make friends with Aminator, which hopefully prevented her from being a part of the war. I'm going to have to try and deal with all three of these guys. We did pick up feudalism, and that's going to give us a key to start switching our government. We're going to switch to our final government of autocracy. We've done the world tour, we've done all three, but we're going to switch to autocracy so that we can plug in serfdom as well as colonization have conscription and veterancy and that'll allow us to build our encampments a little bit a little bit better this will save us some gold this will give any cities that we settle a really strong builder and this will allow us to build settlers faster you can see we're already starting to reap those benefits we're building builders extremely or settlers really quickly over here speaking of which it's now safe to reassign magnus to the capital and we want to put magnus in the capital because he has the promotion provision which means whenever we train a settler uh, the city won't lose population which will allow me to keep a really high population in here now that we do have feudalism we need to start thinking about our next government and i think we're going to go ahead and pick up recorded history for the ability to get another governor title 
and then make our way towards exploration for the Merchant Republic government type. One thing I see players do a lot is building things like granaries, stables and barracks when they don't need to. Right now the thing that my empire lacks is improved tiles, so anywhere where I don't have infrastructure that's super important, I should get to work on making builders. I have a couple of envoys and I'd like to steal suzerainty of some city-states if I could. I'm going to steal Armagh because that'll give me an army that I can use against Canada once I have 350 gold. So I might even put an extra envoy in Armagh so that I can maintain my suzerainty. QMA doesn't have a whole lot of tiles that are worth improving right now. So I'm going to get to work on a campus in here and then I'll build the bath. One thing I didn't tell you guys about when you found a religion, if you found a religion and your cities have holy sites, you actually convert all of those cities automatically. Since the Cree built a whole bunch of holy sites I got a huge advantage and I'm kind of regretting not taking the uh, work ethic thing here because this would have been a huge amount of production for me from these holy sites I thought they were a lot worse but they're actually really really good again just always look for repairs because that's the fastest way to get value from the city time to build the diplomatic quarter now that we have it unlocked and I think I'm gonna build it in my capital for a very specific reason right now because I went for an early war I'm gonna have a really hard time doing international trade route and so what I want to do is set up my capital as a hub for trade routes routes to be sent to it. That means I want to pick up things like surplus logistics on Magnus that'll give trade routes to this city plus two food. More importantly districts like the diplomatic quarter and government plaza give plus one food and plus one production to trade routes to this city. I'm also going to need a couple of farm triangles in here to keep the city really really growing but I'm just going to throw down the diplomatic quarter and then get to work on settlers after that. Let's go ahead and levy Armagh's military for 350 gold and I can use that against Canada. Thankfully their military was already in position to hammer this city so it should be a fairly easy kill. Took down almost half the city's health in a single turn so I might even get another couple of cities out of this war. Just promoted Magnus with surplus logistics and now I'm going to begin moving my legions up to the north to fight Canada and the Khmer. Bye bye Vancouver, thank you very much for the free city. I will of course be keeping that and I'll pop Victor down in that city just for safekeeping. Thankfully Canada had already built a bath in here so it was almost like they knew I was going to capture this city and just got it ready for me to grab it. Now that we've done our repairs in this city whose name I will not attempt to pronounce we can just get to work on builders to start improving the tiles because we're working a ton of unimproved tiles. Improving tiles is one of the most important things that you can do when you're playing Civilization 6. A lot of the saves that I get sent are uh, people who have improved tiles that they're not working and failed to improve tiles that they are working. Make sure you're trying to always work improved tiles in your cities. For example, Rome right now is really, really bad. But if I could get a farm triangle in here and maybe a couple of other tile improvements, it would be a great city. I am settling off of fresh water here, but that's because I'm playing as Rome, which means my baths, i.e. my aqueducts, are half price. So it doesn't penalize me quite as much to actually do this. With this city settled, we not only get a free monument, that's an obelisk of the old gods that gives us a bunch of faith, we also get a free five charge builder, which would have been a six charge builder if I wait for the pyramids, but I think getting the city settled is way more important. Now I could have put my bath here to give extra adjacency to my industrial zone, but this is pretty much the only tile inside this city that I can currently improve, so I decided to put it here and I'll just put a lumber mill here instead. Sort of a short term gain slash long term gain thing. I will immediately begin working on the bath though, because this city has absolutely terrible housing and will not be able to grow without it. We've just got apprenticeship giving us some era score and also extra production on our mines. We didn't start the flame war. It was always burning since the world's been turning. Now that we have apprenticeship, I think our next step is to head to military engineering to pick up niter and also give us an opportunity to maybe go for the uh, muscovin unit as an upgrade for our legions if we decide to continue going to war. The great thing about legions is they can very easily clear barbarian encampments in the mid game, netting you tons of era score and gold. It also looks like if we're patient this city is going to rebel in six turns and maybe flip towards me. I generally won't build a settler in a secondary city that isn't my capital if it's more than 10 turns. About 10 to 12 turns is a good amount of time to invest into a settler. Otherwise I'll produce them out of my main settler production city. Pop down our very first lumber mill getting us mass production and a very nice tile for Ostia to work. Always look for productive tiles to improve first. Production is king in Civilization 6. This is a little bit of a problem that we've run into a crossbowman here, but we might be able to overcome it if we're careful. No, nope, we pretty much have to take Tortoise here or that unit is dead. We're going to have to play extremely carefully. I don't think I'll be able to do anything up here except maybe do a bit of pillaging with all of these guys. So I might send off the weak units to kind of run around and pillage while my swordsmen and legions come up to fight the main army. 
Yeah, look at that. This swordsman just took two shots from crossbowmen, and that was with the tortoise promotion providing him with a huge amount of combat strength. So I think we're just in full retreat here. Oh my god, he's got three crossbowmen and the city has walls in it. Yeah, there's no chance we're breaking this, so this is now just a pillage game. Just look for any pillages we can get. And any free kills on units is always worth it too. We do have access to El Cid, who is fantastic. Mainly because of his unique ability to form a core out of military units. So we could have a unit that has plus 10 combat strength over a normal unit. Yeah, there goes another unit. Sucks, but it does mean we get to escape with one of them. So we'll just retreat you. Yeah, seeing the amount of crossbowmen that... Uh, Canada has. I don't think we're going to be able to really do much here, even in terms of pillaging. I was trying to run this unit around to get like a pillage off on something, but he's just going to get shot twice and die. I think in this case, our best move is just to turtle up and uh, play defensively until the emergency is gone. I will pick up Grants though on Pingala to get extra great people points in the city that he's in. Once this campus is finished in Kume, we'll be getting extra great people points. I also forgot to pick up theology so that I can build temples. That's going to let me evangelize my religion. I think the big thing for Rome right now is to start improving some of these really weak tiles. I could put down monasteries and those would be really, really valuable. But I think my long-term growth is to try to turn this into a very big hub city. So I'm thinking farms are a good move. And then I'll probably build the bath after the settler once we have enough surplus food to actually grow this city up to like 10 population. My goal is to turn this city into a production hub, a trade route, which means I want to get all of the districts that provide production. So that's things like commercial hubs, industrial zones, government plaza, diplomatic quarter, and ideally a harbor. I won't be able to get a harbor this game, but getting the commercial hub and industrial zone with, with these two should be good enough. I'm going to keep the bath where it belongs, but I think I'm going to get rid of this commercial hub put a harbour in this city instead, and then move the industrial zone to the coastline. Alternatively, I could turn this into a gold production city by doing something like this, which will give me a ton of population to actually work the water tiles. Now I could improve this cattle here, but I think it's better to put a farm triangle in here because I will be removing this and I already have farms placed and you wanna get value out of your farms. So I'll just harvest that. And harvesting a tile improvement is actually pretty handy because it can force the uh, city to grow up to a bigger population which means you can place more districts and stuff like that now that we have access to temples I'm going to purchase one once I have enough gold it takes a little bit too long to build them and I want to evangelize and do an inquisition as soon as possible the Khmer are coming at me with a rather large army but I do have like legions in position to hold them off I'm going to take suzerainty of Brussels for that 15% production towards wonders it's not a huge amount but it will help me build the pyramids plus I get a little bit of era score for being their first suzerain yeah it looks like it shaved about two turns off the pyramids which isn't terrible at all. Canada wants peace, but I think I can get a little bit of value before I actually peace them out. Like I should be able to pillage this. So I'm just going to go ahead and pillage these. See if I can kill this crossbowman. And that way I sort of end the war on slightly better terms. And he should be willing to give me a little bit of gold as well as to cede that city to me. Which is I'm pretty happy about considering this was a defensive war that I didn't plan. And I don't really want to be in a war with somebody who has more science than me and has crossbowmen when I don't have a unit to counter them. Little bit of a Khmer invasion around my capital, but we shouldn't have too much trouble dealing with it owing to the fact that we have a decent amount of legions in the area as well as some good city shots. Settle ourselves another city and get our free builder and monument. Just want to talk about the power of actually laying down a farm. Right now these tiles are giving me two food and one production. And it costs me one citizen to actually work these tiles. Now, it's important to remember that each one of these citizens take two food to maintain. So I'm actually only getting plus one production from this tile. And that's why we look to build farms in triangles once we have the feudalism tech. Because by building a farm in a triangle, each of these farms will get an extra plus one food. And so now, instead of just giving me one production as my surplus, I'm using two of the food to work the tile and I'm walking away with one food and one production. In total, the food surplus from here is four because it takes three population to work these tiles and I'm getting 10 food from it. So that means three multiplied by two, it takes me six food to work this. So I end up with four spare food and that four spare food can support something like 
if I wanted to work a specialist slot in a district. I had a few people ask me what a specialist slot is, but it's basically when you build a district and then build a building in that district, you can actually get your workers to go work in that district. Each district has a different yield that they get for their uh, specialist. For example, encampments give you gold and production. And when you build the military academy, you'll actually get an extra plus one production, which means in the late game, each of the specialists that are working inside a encampment are worth two gold and two, uh, two production. That's useful if you're working tiles that aren't very good. For example, this uh, exclusively food tile isn't super good right now. My city has more than enough surplus and it's at its housing limit, so it doesn't actually need any more food. So I could unlock this tile and force work the encampment and it wouldn't really negatively affect the city's growth because I'm limited by housing. See here, if I switch between the two tiles, I only lose two turns of growth. Now that will change once I actually build the bath, but that's just something worth keeping in mind that you're gonna wanna maybe switch around your tiles cause compared to this one, I would grow two turns slower but in this one, I end up with a little bit more production and gold. Nice. We just completed our bath for the first time, which gets us plus four era score. And now we're only four era score away from a golden age with over 20 turns left in the era to get them. Now that we've completed the bath in our capital, we need to make a decision about, do we want to go ahead and build more settlers? Here's the thing. I have an absolute ton of land over here that I could settle. But there are other options for me to go for, like the Anchor Watt, which would give me plus one population and housing in all my cities. Or I could go for a larger army and actually push into the Khmer. Personally, I kind of feel like mass settling is a little bit more fun. And since I'm kind of on par with the AI, I can get away with going for a mass settlement strategy. So I'm just gonna spam out an absolute ton of settlers and see if I can fill my lands up. Another little mechanic I'd like to talk about is sometimes you'll be looking at the list of your districts and some of them will cost more than other ones and the reason for that is um, the ones that are cheaper are ones that you haven't built as many of because uh, there's a whole mechanic that I did a video on but basically if you have less districts of a specific type than the average number of districts in your empire then it'll be discounted and so since I have a bunch of districts and I haven't really built many commercial hubs they're half price. Now it's important to note though, that the price changes when you actually place an industrial zone and not when you complete it. What that means is if I go through my empire and place a bunch of these districts, in particular the industrial zone, once I place enough of them, um, I will actually no longer get the discount for them in other cities. So you can see, my holy sites and campuses are taking the full amount of turns to construct of 50, whereas all my other districts are discounted with the exception of industrial zones, because I just placed two more industrial zones in my empire. The second half of that is that you actually have to finish districts for them to count towards your average number of districts. So you can't just throw down a bunch of districts. You lose the discount on placing and you have to finish the district to get the discount back. I did a whole video on it that probably needs to be updated again but just always be on the lookout for when you can maybe place a district and get some extra value for half price. Boom, there goes the pyramid. The really nice thing about this is we will go ahead and get ourselves another builder for free, but also every single builder that we'll get from now on and that currently exists gets an extra build charge. If you remember that works exceptionally well with our benefits because every time we settle a city, we get a free builder. I decided to settle the city of Pudioli on this marble tile so that I would have extra tiles to actually start placing districts on top of. I think it's about time that we picked up universities so that we can start increasing our science ahead of the AI and maybe go for a late game domination. Nice, we just unlocked exploration. That gives us access to Merchant Republic. Merchant Republic is great because it's gonna give us a huge boost to our gold income, as well as our ability to produce districts. And if you compare it to autocracy that only has uh, four cards, it has six government policy slot cards that we can pop in. I'll be popping in scripture and natural philosophy for the boost to science and faith. Damn, I'm one turn away from affording Isaac Newton, who will give me really, really good universities. But this AI is about two turns away, so next turn they could probably choose to purchase him if they wanted to. It's gonna be a close call to see if I can get them. Looks like I was lucky enough, and I'm kind of glad that I didn't actually buy those settlers, because getting plus two science in your universities is actually a pretty big deal. I will miss out on Galileo, but universities only give you a baseline of four science. So getting a free plus two science on them is actually a 50% increase 
in the science return on a university. Not to mention the fact that Isaac Newton will actually build you a library and a university for free in the city that you use him in. And I'm going to pop him into QMA in a few seconds here. The city of QMA is producing about 20.5 science per turn. I go ahead and use Galileo. Instantaneously, the city is now producing 29.7 science per turn. But importantly, I can also elect, if I so wish, to actually work these specialist slots in this campus. I get that up to 34.3. The hard thing is I'll be working less of the tiles outside of the city. So I'd probably want to get a farm triangle set up in here and maybe a few lumber mills before I looked into doing that. But if the only thing I cared about was science, this would definitely be a viable thing to do. Perfect, there's civil service and that's gonna allow us to get alliances. We'll instantly pick up a military alliance with Nubia. This will make my life easier when I go to war because if I call Nubia to the war, I'll get a plus five combat strength against all of the enemy units. One thing to remember is that the food boost from feudalism doesn't just count if you have only two farms beside a farm. This farm right here has four farms adjacent to it and it's actually getting plus two extra food. So instead of being a farm that produces, for example, like this one, a surplus of one food and one production because two food is being used to work it, this farm is actually producing two food, one production as a surplus. So it's much better than these other farms. And if you compare it to one of these two food, one production farms, it's like astronomically better. The city of Hauri Haralayalaya, uh, I don't know how to say that at all, but it's uh, revolted and I'm gonna be keeping it because uh, this is my city now, which means I can actually start moving my troops up to, uh, to guard it. Uh, one useful thing you can do to actually accelerate your empire is in places where you want to actually do a chop, like here, because I would like to place either a commercial hub or a bath here. If you start building a builder and then chop the tile, I'm gonna use the 75 production from the chop to build a builder that costs 94 production, and then he can go on uh, to improve a bunch of tiles. So chopping out builders is actually one of the best ways to accelerate your empire if, and only if, you have tiles that you need to improve or things that you need to chop to get out of your way so that you can continue to improve your empire. So I'll chop here, and now I have another builder that I can just run around with and uh, improve all these tiles in this city, for example, like I need this fish online. I would ideally like to maybe get rid of this cattle and that'll give me some food. Lovely, just completed my first industrial zone with an adjacency of four or higher. And I get three era score as a result. Although to be fair, I don't think I really needed that era score because I'm at 85 out of 71. That'll probably be useful when the new Dramatic Ages mode releases. But right now, at least I have a guaranteed Golden Age in 13 to 33 turns. I feel like cattle are really underrated for actually harvesting them. I think a lot of people just absentmindedly improve them because they're pretty good tiles for food one production. But if you harvest them and uh, it's owned by the right city. So for example, I'm actually going to swap it over to Kume. This city is two turns from growing. If I harvest this cattle, it'll instantly boost the city to seven population. And then it's two turns from growing to eight population. So I actually like boosted this city's population by an entire pop by harvesting this. And now I have room to maybe put a farm triangle here. It does cost you a couple of build charges, but accelerating the population of your cities can be useful because the city just hit seven population, which means I could place down another district. Just unlocked gunpowder, giving us access to musketmen. It also gives our quarries plus one production. I did opt to keep some of my quarries around this game, especially because this city whose name I can't pronounce had a pretty low production line. Now that I have musket men, I could upgrade my legions and continue pushing on the Khmer. That seems like a pretty reasonable thing to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in professional army to get a 50% discount on all unit upgrades. And now I can get Muscovin for the cheap old price of 135 gold and 20 niter. I don't mind spending that much niter on this. You can have the price through another card, but I'm making four per turn so I can upgrade one every five turns. And it'll take these guys a couple of turns to get to the front line anyway. Now, we've already managed to upgrade our capital to be a massive food and production hub if we're gonna be sending trade routes there. So what we want to be doing is looking around our empire for cities that need help. And what I mean by cities that need help is um, five food and four production is a decent amount of food and production. However, like, for example, in the city of Cume, it's not a massive amount. But for example, in Arpinium, um, that would actually double the production of Arpinum. And that's what I mean by uh, cities that need help. Cities that are newly settled, slow to develop, have huge potential. That's where you want to put your trade routes and then trade with your capital that's built for maximum production. 
Speaking of which, it's about time that I place down my industrial zone in my capital, and that's a plus five industrial zone. So I think I'm going to stop building settlers for a bit to get that online, because that'll improve the trade routes to my capital even more. World Congress has come by, and thankfully I managed to get the melee class plus five combat strength military advisory policy passed. Now I'm running around with musketmen with 70 combat strength. I think I actually just became unstoppable, provided the enemy doesn't have like renaissance walls in their cities. Nice, we just got our first campus with three adjacent here higher and got some more era score. Bit of a waste again, because I currently have 96 uh, <laughs> points towards the golden age. I did, however, win my military emergency and pick up 200 diplo favor. And this is why I love Jesuit education. I think I settled the city of Putioli like maybe 10 turns ago, chopped out a campus in here. And now I can just instantaneously start purchasing a library. And next turn, I'll be able to purchase the university in here. This is a brand new city that's already cranking out 10 signs per turn. I love how the Khmer are trying to beg me for peace now that I have a Muskiman inside their territory. They keep throwing units at this guy and they all take like half their health and damage while he walks away pretty healthy. I'm going to step him back just a little bit though to keep him safe. If you don't have enough money, just go to your neighbor and trade off some of your spare resources and grab theirs. And now I should have the cash to actually upgrade some muskmen. I've got three muskmen right now and a pair of crossbows. Ideally, I would also grab myself a siege tower so that I can actually hit these cities with these musketmen. But I'll need a little bit more cash before I can do that. But I think that's going to be it from me. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.